Good morning, oh. Dr. Brad. Oh, Good I have evening. a halo around my coffee cup. Nice. It makes it look so mystical. Yeah, so mystical. That's fascinating. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm looking up in the air, but as you know, my uh, they're not refixing my laptop, my other laptop till tomorrow. So I'm having there's a camera there in my eyeball, and the, you are up there in this anyway. I'm I understand. Sorry. I apologize. So <clears throat> Brad has been victimizing me with his wisdom <laughs> over the past uh, hour. And um, we just had an interesting, a very interesting conversation because of it. So, Brad, you you studied all sorts. I mean, you you wrote a two hundred page book, right? That's before, right. Before you so came, what? How this worked was I I began it. Uh, my business was failing, and I was spending a lot of time in front of screens waiting for people to come visit me online, trying to pay bills for the business. And so I I had a lot of downtime, and I'm like. I'm like, whatever is hurting me, because I'm being oppressed by crushed between the gears of the of the establishment. And um, whatever is crushing the life out of my business, the socioeconomic system is the same thing that is afflicting the outside world, which is the whole United States and the world at large. What is the pressure? And I said, I better figure it out. So I started studying and reading all kinds of books. And it's like the the biggest hurdle to that that I had to allow myself to study things that were outside the scope of what my father, the historian, would deem to be reasonable. Which was that, so I'm like, I'm like breaking taboos by reading crazy books, right? And like the stuff like, the stuff that's, that's conspiracy theories or whatever like that. And it's like, that's what I did. And I'm like, I just, I just kept on hammering away and seeking what I could find and, and discovering weird things and Okay, and 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 then I tried to assemble it all in my when I wrote the two hundred page book, but I quit writing the two hundred page book when I was like, I'm learning too fast. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, I can't, I can't, I can't make that book fit it because it's written in a inflationary language, very inflationary language, and alternating with historical. Um, deflationary language you were, trying, you were looking for a way to express your ideas and that was the only way you could do it and it it's a funny book because it has the illustrations it's funny man <laughs> <laughs> i will probably publish it but not yet it's it's too early <laughs> but so so, anyway. so the, the, along the way i do i tripped across these various authors and i would try to understand that guy and then I would try to understand that guy. And then I will understand that guy. And that's the pattern I, I, cause I'm like, I just need to understand one person and understand what he's trying to convey by immersing myself in the knowledge base there. And so it, having studied with you because I studied with you and I'm like, okay, that's a crazy book that is right on the money. And I need to know more about that. So that's what this, why we're here still is getting that out because it's this your your knowledge base allows me to understand the the way all those other pieces fit together and now i can discuss the crazy thing and not appear to be crazy too right so the way uh we've talked about it brad talked about it earlier is that um if you don't have basically the scientific understanding of what's going on you write in the grammar or the paradigm that's available to you right and so, you know, maybe maybe that that what's going on makes sense in the religious paradigm or the or the the fic, the mythical paradigm or the you know or the philosophical paradigm or the the critical paradigm or or the what's the one the Europeans all er, esoteric nonsense paradigm right right or and if you and the problem is in the in the scientific paradigm um, there's actually whole, there are actually big holes in our scientific paradigm that we've tried to fix. fix. So um, in the social sciences, pretty much behavioral sciences. So what we, what, you know, and I would say, so what's happened is if you understand our, our work, my work, our work, you understand that there's a, there's a very simple organization to the universe, right? Um, it expresses itself in a very small number of rules, which is kind of intellectually humiliating as a human. <laughs> Um, 
And that with these very, this very somewhat small uh, set of rules, you sort of see, okay, it's all, everything is reducible or explicable in these various, on, with these various rules. Now, one of those rules, of course, sets of rules, of course, is what we call the grammars, which is the spectrum of logics that we work with, which, you know, we normally talk about is the intuitionistic, um, the, 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 uh, uh, supernatural the mythical the religious the philosophical the rational the empirical the scientific the formal logical and the what we do with the computational right which is the end point All right so you look at this and once you say okay so there are only there's only one rule there's a before during and after state in the universe and we call those states the sciences right i mean right uh, we express those three the before during you know physical behavioral and evolutionary sciences right and then the before and after states and then there's the logic that you know of those three things right the, the 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 process of logic and then there's the grammars which is the set of systems of measurement we use to talk about it right and some of those systems of measurement are deflationary mathematics and some of them are inflationary you know the fictionalisms like sophistry magic to pseudo sophistry to idealism magic to pseudoscience um uh, myth to uh, theology uh, and then of course enumeracy and uh, and astrology and all the other nonsense equivalents of mathematics mathematical sophistry are in there so you know what's the one where you 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 read things to convert words to numbers and then numerology numerology i mean i mean it's all the same shit it's nonsense but you can construct a lot of stuff out of nonsense with you know <laughs> then you just end you end up in all in the lies yes you just way out there and then of course yeah we, we talk about then a lot of our work is in lying which is exasperating because once you study that you realize all that stuff we do here in mathematics and logics and accounting and all the way up through to formal lang or proceduralism and all this other stuff. And then you look at lying. It's like, wow, we got more. We do better. We're even more sophisticated at lying than we are telling the truth. So <coughs> it's a big spectrum of stuff that we we got to go through. So once you see that, now you look at all those authors that seem wacky. Right. And it's, you realize that there's no grammar in other words, there's no science of behavior in history before our work that lets them speak otherwise. So they speak with whatever grammar is available to them, right? Right. I mean, they speak what we call grammars, whatever paradigm, paradigm vocabulary, uh, logic, and grammar that's available to them. And so it makes perfect sense. Now, so now when you look at the world, all these people that are crazy, you're like, well, this. if you read one of them, that's nuts. Or another one, that's nuts. It's like reading Evola, right? I think Evola's nuts, but I mean, it's not entirely nuts. I mean, there's some there's some truth in there, right? Okay. So when you read all these guys together, you see that, oh, they're all saying these crazy guys, these guys that are sort of fringe, that there's an element of truth that's consistent across all of them. They just can't science it. Or they just couldn't science it. They just did the best they could with the tools available to them. And so then you realize, oh, shit, if that many people, that many grammars identify, you know, it's like three points make a line, four points reinforce the line, five points confirm it, six points said there's definitely a freaking line here, right? I mean, and so when you start seeing this, like, okay, uh, the pattern that these people are seeing is correct. It's like, I would say, you know, E. Michael Jones is a great example of a guy that's mm. easy to dismiss. Because of the paradigm. I watched two of his shows yesterday. I was very impressed by what he's doing. I'm like, wow. He's a, he's no dummy. I mean, that's a that no. Guy. He's a sharpie, and it's like just uh, but he's he's operating at this with inflated yeah. functionality, he's just really inflated just. language, and which is but that doesn't mean it's like it's like when people say, "Is the myth true?" Well, it conveys a truth. Is but it is not true per se, right? I mean, it's it's an analogy or a, it's something that's meant to convey meaning in terms you can understand it, rather than uh, than the rather com the the vast amount of knowledge that's necessary to understand something scientifically, right? I mean, that's the problem with scientific knowledge is you need to know a lot of stuff before you can know anything, whereas in parables you don't need to know much before you can know a whole lot. So uh, it's just the problem is you can make deductions, inductions, abductions, arithmetic, mathematics, and re formal reasoning out of uh, out of the science, and you can't do any of that stuff with 
with the myth that's not you can this is where i the only problem i have with religious people is when they try to use logic uh within a mythic structure and i'm like uh it ain't it, no that doesn't work that's silly but you know the, it's amazing what if you take a parable and you use a set of parables it's like i'm going to tell you this story this story and this story and by telling you those three stories i can tell you this that's staying in the paradigm that's not trying to make a science out of myth or or, or a rational rationalism out of myth, myth. That's using the myth as the way it's set, in, which is to set a bunch of data points, right? That you can feel like you don't have to be like abstractly brainy to get this. You can just be a human being. That's why myths work. Hmm. And then you can tell these data points and say, so so what we mean is, and summarize. And uh, I can't remember what my favorite, this author is. One of the authors that did wrote a wrote about the morality of uh, our, our traditional children's stories, et cetera. Um, and it's, it's, it's unfortunate. I don't know if it's Bloom. I can't remember who wrote it. I, no, it doesn't seem like it's, I don't know, Bloom. Um, so he wrote this. And at the end of the parable, he does what they what they did with uh, Aesop, which is just say, here's what this parable means. Right? Well, I mean, if you have those parables, you could say, Okay, these three things matter, and then I can work with set logic, right, to convey you these three principles. So if you do this, you do this, this. Now you've basically created what we call um, the 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 logic of parables, right? And that's fine. It's when you say, okay, but that's the, therefore the sun really did rise on this day or whatever. I mean, that's just, you know, don't tell me that or or. You know, and I don't want to hear even stuff like God told me. No, God didn't tell you shit, right? I mean, didn't happen. Um, uh, you may have, and you may have be like, I mean, I, I definitely have the same idea that, uh, and I don't talk about this often. That you know, God sent me on this fucking mission. Um, <laughs> and, how rude! <laughs> and uh, how, how how fucking rude was he to not tell me that trials and tribulations that the journey would entail. <laughs> You know, or because if he had, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have done it. I'd have gone. I have to. Um, I have to for tell the bills. This just 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 because it pleases me. Which is, um, I asked Kurt a year or two ago. I said, Kurt, what got you started on this project? <laughs> he says, he says nobody in their right mind would start this project. It's too crazy much work. It's insane. <laughs> Well, and it's like that. that. I feel sent by the same purpose for the goodness of the of the polity, right? It's like it's for the goodness. We're we're via positiving the um, we're cutting away. We're via negativing all the not true. Yes. And then via positiving all the that that we can say about the truth. Right. Which and, and to be learning how to do it. Do it is hard. So so you know, and I, and I of course I I uh, thank Brad regularly because I was definitely struggling couple years ago i i was like i don't i have tried to tell this story all these ways and i am still impossible to understand and uh and, and i'm like i know and it doesn't matter if it's right if i can't make but point oh 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 one percent of people understand it who are is equally yeah, as like, syntopic right uh as equally as uh e Eagle is a polymathic and is equally autistic, right? I mean, if I can't, you know, I mean, what does that do to me? I mean, it leaves me with a, uh, the cure to cancer, the, to conceptual cancer that nobody can inject, right? I mean, it's fucking pointless. So Brad, uh, I thank Brad pretty much. I don't know, probably once a day. <laughs> probably, probably about like that, yeah. <laughs> I, I on a, uh, like I say, I told for the audience. I I, I told Kurt. I said I, I I saw what he was doing. I I said I, I I'm obligated to help him. I was just like I was obligated to help Ron Paul in 2008. And it's just like that man, just he needs help. Help him. It's a command. It's a compulsion. Who was the other libertarian that was running at the time? He was from, he was a gov previously a governor. Of mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Arizona or um, New Mexico. Governor of a Western state. He'd been a successful libertarian governor, and he was a reasonably Montana. successful libertarian. His I'm name is Montana. Is it Montana? I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, so um, we met with a bunch of us because you know that's what they do. They 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 get a, a one one rich guy 
who knows all the rest of the rich guys. Right. And, and he calls you up and says, yeah, I'm going to have this thing in my house and we're going to talk to so-and-so and you want to, you want to show up. So we sit there and I listen to him. And of course, spiritually, emotionally, I love libertarians because we're kindred spirits. Right. Right. But as, as someone who actually has tried to make things happen in this world, it's, it's a nice dream. Uh, be, it's actually the moral position that you would try to get people to, right? But it is not the position that moral that people moral or not start from. <laughs> so, right? And I'm talking to this guy, and I'm like, I just adore you, but you're dead, right? Um, you're never going anywhere because you can't believe that people are like you. I mean, That's it's right. one of the most common. Human cognitive biases. I think it's probably the most common human cognitive bias is but to normative believe bias, that, right? You're right. You're nor you're normal, and people are people are mostly like you. And we we can't figure that what the f normal is. I mean, I mean, it, and yes, you, you, you. It's one thing to be in philosophy or sociology, or whatever. It's another thing to be economics and know for damn certain average doesn't exist. Normal doesn't exist. The thing we think all normal is, for us is whatever at our world size, right? The, the, my mental capacity, my social and inter business interactions, my my informational processing. Even if you if you're like, well, what is what does that mean? Well, that's that's whatever part of the curve I'm under. And you think well, then they say, well, cur what part of the curve? Right? There's just this economic district. No, fuck no, right. I mean, we're talking about layers and layers and layers of curves that intersect with various different things and perform these weird oscillating distributions so that there's no, you know, there, there's a normal distribution of most things, but there, but the, it's a very noisy set of distributions on anything, right? So, so, you know, you see this very quickly in economics, but it, the the tendency this normalcy bias to get over there and that's the problem with libertarians is they emotionally and correctly intuit that it's moral but they don't emotionally and correctly intuit that it's equally useful and that's why people don't that's why people don't uh, people that people don't demonstrate libertarian behavior it's almost always the d domain of uh smart guys right who smart young males yeah, um, who uh, are are want to cl climb right the the ladder of dominance ladder um, uh, before they have learned what it takes to climb that ladder, All right? And so they are essentially doing the just as the left wing is trying to evade responsibility for the commons, right? The 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 libertarians are trying to evade it. Uh, some of it, right? They're trying to evade the political commons, right? Which is, uh, they're doing the moral thing interpersonally, but they're trying to avoid the, the policing function of the political commons. Whereas the conservatives like, yo, man, he, humanity will take every fucking bite of every fucking cheating, lying, scheming thing what possible if we don't maintain extraordinary discipline on these barbarians, right? And so <laughs> right. we're... So that's the conservative position. So they they're like white blood cells. It's like if there's a, anything out of line here, we're gonna swarm it because uh, it's really bad. And fortunately, there are the due to some demographic changes and including certain other people in the in the voting pool, the conservatives have lost. I don't like what I you know. This is a you're laughing at me because you know I don't like. No, wait, wait. I'm laughing at you because you're right. Yes, yeah, exactly. All right, fine. And it's like, and you don't have to like it. it, it, I, don't it have to like, I hate it, though. And people think, oh, wow, look at Doolittle. He's talking about all these women and, and the, the, the uh, Ashkenazi influence over time and the, the Russians and the, you know, and then, then you know, you, yeah, well, you're not talking about how I talk about white people, which is like we do every fucking stupid thing possible <laughs> to fall into every stupid trap because we're so optimistically naive right right i mean i talk of the same thing but they think I, it's all this emotional thing for me I, I actually have the opposite position 
I'm a libertarian. I want everybody to happy, nice people. That you, I'm one step from a flower child wanting <laughs> to get along. <laughs> That's my attitude, right? And so, so you th I'm just thinking of, I just got to fix this so nobody can get away with the shit so we can all live like flower children, which is, the, <laughs> which is really my christian aspect of the libertarian that's 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 kurt's um, little internal mythos that can, allows him to continue on <laughs> you know i'm almost like i just don't like conflict i want us to all be happy nice people i mean what do you expect? <laughs> it's like that's the impossible dream right there bro well, exactly but you know i mean I, I i can tell but we all know you know if you spend enough time either in therapy or in contemplation you learn what's your core principles you we, we all have what's called a foundation right right for me it's like autism um and uh abuse of my mother by my father and mm. abuse of me and my sisters by my father and and the fact that um, you know, so if you combine those factors together, I feel like I got to fix fucking everything. So, I mean, okay, well, it's not, not, uh, conflict is bad and I want peace and happiness. Really, uh, the work that you're doing does pretty much does it. <laughs> it accomplishes that goal. <laughs> yeah, it just goes to show that Einstein was right. It's not how smart you are. It's how long you work at something. Oh, was that, it's not Einstein. It was, uh, Oh, no, it was. Both Edison and Einstein said that in one mm. frame or another. And it's so right. fucking true. People talk about Einstein as some saint. I'm like, you don't understand. I mean, I understand what he did, and I understand how fucked up it was, right? I mean, he, I know what he got wrong, right? But I understand how he got there. He got there by working really hard. Because I remember it. I was like 11 or 12, and I'm looking and staying in the hallway, and I'm there's a, if you walk out of my bedroom door, my parents' door, my sister's door, the bathroom door, and between my door and the bathroom door was this hall mirror, right? And so you walk out and you look at this mirror. And I don't know how much time I spent trying to figure out how the fucking thing, the light worked, right? Why does light do that so that it reflects back and I see it and how, you know, I spent forever on that. Well, that's what started Einstein. It's the same fucking thing. Right, mm. it just drove him nuts. So he couldn't figure out that problem. <laughs> you just got to work on it from the time you're like, you know, there's some part <laughs> right. of your brain is working on it from the time you're like 11, right? I mean, <laughs> or nine or something. I mean, it's the same that problem. That sounds right. And I was that sitting in church right. and I'm all conflicted. You know, I'm all, my family's, you know, alcoholic nightmare like most alcoholic. Not, not that, not, not as anywhere near as bad in, in physical terms or anything like that, but it would have the disruption and the chaos it was, it was mm. very painful and so and my mother's a fucking angel right and so you know I, it just drove me nuts so you know so you, you grow up in that environment and you're just like i just want people to fucking get along can't we all just get along you know i mean uh, i'm afraid that's a sorry, that's a, sorry. well i mean it's a it's a it's a moral ambition Right. Yeah. I think I did a pretty good job, honestly, but I just worked at it longer than anyone did. And I'm lucky to be at a point in time where it's possible to get all that knowledge from all those disciplines and synthesize yes. it into a, to, to the, the patterns across them. And it just wasn't possible before, you know. And so, you know, you you did this. You were on the same fucking journey. You're trying to figure it out. Right. It's not like a lot of us aren't on this journey trying to figure it out. No, there's a lot. There's a lot. So I, my, I watch it. There's the, the 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 Twitter feed. I was interacting with it yesterday, and it's like, it's like you 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 don't have to convince everybody. You don't have to get everybody. You just need a fragment, and you will be a, a fragment that understands and is wants to be active and influence the world in a positive way, and you'll be successful, unquestionably. And that's all. And we're that we're on the road. And we're accumulating the people that are um, interested in the solution, and we're learning how to talk to them. It was work, man. We worked our asses. This is like unbelievable. And to me, I just keep the long goal in mind. That's right. And, and I know the, how movements work because I've studied movements. Right? Is it's like it's like there's a all bunch of rotation of people, even. Right. As the ideas change, and you sort of gradually move to where from the fringe people to the competent people. And you just got to put up, I mean, that's how I look at it. I just put up with the fringe people. I mean, I didn't, I, I, I don't want to say this. Do I, I didn't really want to work with the hard right at all because I was a libertarian, but they're mm. the, the, the real libertarians were fighting me and the hard right was picking up on my work. And I'm not the hard right, the, 
Yeah, well, it's the the the, the ethno nationalist right. Yeah, right? picking up on it. And so I sort of got associated with them, and I'm like, I'm a libertarian. I don't. I just want people to get a fucking law. But you know, I dug in there and did my thing, and I did my thing like I did with my thing with libertarians, and I'm like, okay, I got this figured out. Then I did my thing with the churchies, and oh my god, that made my head explode. <laughs> Uh, it's not hard to get in the in the liberal mind because I I mean I went to art school for Christ's sake I was surrounded by these fucking people so I so went to art school I mean that sounds really I was trained in I was get, I got formal training in the arts art history and art theory right it was that's did, that's I not did, small I didn't it's not you know it's like it's it's I didn't get it like you get let's make pa- let's make paper napkin you know what i mean I, I didn't get it like that it was like you know 3 hours a day of debate on art on any given movement any mm. given time learning how to con- critique art understand it decompose it uh, put it into relative position against other art forms oh it's a discipline it. it's a discipline right so that's what i did now you have to go in order to do that you have to know in order to critique art you have to know the craft because otherwise you don't understand when you're looking at something why that brush stroke looks like that why that stone looks like that why that etching looks like that why that architecture looks like that right, right. or you know you, you pick pick all you know why a play is structured as it is and mm. you know, why literature is structured you don't understand all those things unless you know the underlying craft which is basically right. a science right i mean it's just a sun you know, it's tech, or technology technology it's a technology so you study that stuff. So I learned that kind of thing. And when and it was really useful for me because I'm naturally a philosophical person. So my first work is in the philosophy of art, right? All right, which which is I still think is the best work that's ever been done. Um because you know why? Because so little's been done. <laughs> hmm. It's one of those things, there's no analytic treatment of art other than mine. Hmm. So, uh yeah, although I gotta tell you, that was one of the best things. Uh, if you look at Ayn Rand's work, yeah, um, uh, and I don't try to pick on her because I view it her the problem with her in is in her followers, not in her. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, I think her most important work for me was the Romantic Manifesto, which is her theory of art. Hmm. And I didn't know this, but when I joined the university, I did. That was the philosophical foundation hmm. of that. Uh, that uh, university's uh, art theory department. So I didn't realize what I was being taught was based on this relatively recent work at that time, hmm. was the Romantic Manifesto, which I still think is uh, is the. It's like if you want to read, you read her work for the literary, the Plato, Plato's version, in other words, the literary, and you read my work for the analytic version, and you got it. That's that's art right there. Hmm. Um, uh, Thank and, I, you. and I've only, um, I've done all the stuff to write, to do the course on art. Right. And then I sort of got distracted into doing all this stuff here in steps. Huh. I was, a, what occurred to me, what is, um, we were talking about technology, right? Cause what we are developing here is a technology for expression. Right. And it, and it's the, this word, this, it, this is a very interesting word. And I'm going to break it down into ancient Greek, techne logos, Technology. which is to create the intention in your mind to make something happen in the world. Yes. Okay. Which comes from the um, ancient Hebrew or Aramaic, right? Which is the first word of the Bible. And um, it, it mean, they, they translate it as Genesis. But uh, now... My memory is escaping me, so I apologize oh, for not having the Hebrew in my mind. We're, we're both advancing in age, so we're allowed to have memory. Yeah. Isn't that mm-hmm. right? When you're younger, it's like you're you're you can't blame it on something. It's um, barashit. Barashit. Barashit means translate techne logos into ancient Greek. Barashit is to make something happen. And bring it to being, yes. <clears throat> Boy, that was tough. That was sweating me a little bit. I got to shake it off. 
I always find this, it, it used to, your your fascination with this stuff used to kind of throw me. I'm like, I don't get it. And now I now now that I've spent enough time with you, I do. And I see the value in it. It's crazy, weird. Because it's like, what it does is it, it allows you to see this thread of consciousness. Over time. Through thousands of years, right? It's like, what what is what is holding all this together, right? Yeah. And and what the 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 terminology from the ancient world is is like um <clears throat> it's a it's window, it's a window inflationary. In, yeah. Say that again. It's like deflationary. Yes. But it's so or it's such a, close to the origin of the human consciousness that it has a lot of manifestations out in this. Right. That's the way to look time. at it. It lets us see back into how we used to think. Before. And then put the way we, what are you looking at now based on that frame? Yes. Back frame, in that allows you to see the connections that you otherwise are invisible. Right. Because you, you take them for granted. It's sort of like metaphysical presumptions, right? You, you, you take so, a lot of, so, a lot of modern stuff clouds, the pet, the origins. Right. No, no, my uncle would say that's an accident of language. And I'm like, there's no such thing as an accident. Is it, a language? It, 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 it has its internal sensibility. It de defines a true sensibility of relation, right? Yeah. No, I, yeah. I study a lot of uh, etymology, mostly in the Indo-European mm -hmm. side. I like that. Because when you study uh, uh, Indo-European etymology, uh, you know, you go through all these, uh, br these branches. What you find the roots is you get to how how the people who created your civilization thought about the world right and so um if you see like one of the things i think i've told the story a bunch but when i went into um a contract law i had the most amazing contract law professor oh my god and he, he brought in he was 84 years old he brought in his hobbles in and he picks up his handkerchief and he dots the corners of his mouth it's it back and he brings out the oed and it's back uh -huh. right and it's the oed when it was volumes instead of one big book so you could it, right it was big fucking heavy so i can't even imagine and he opens it up and he tells us the etymology of the word nice <laughs> yeah which is that which is has taken on a life of its own of recent but um but that word was actually a horrific insult uh, originally, but it has been flipped around over time. So he, so, so what your dad would call an accident of language, I would call evolution of uh, uh, evolution of meaning. Right. These terms are terms are always part of their time, which is why the left hates the the. Uh, the current judge, the, the current Supreme Court, because Scalia bought back the idea that words are measurements at a point in time. They don't, the, the, whatever the measurement was considered, uh, you know, a bushel of wheat was a bushel then. I don't know what a bushel of wheat is today, but at that point, a bushel of wheat was a bushel of wheat. So it says a bushel. It's not what a bushel is today. It's what a bushel was back then. And so you say, well, you have so you have to know a t the context in which a term was used mm. in history. So in this sense, we are we are saying the conservatives are saying the the purpose of law is the law is a system of measurement, right? It's a set of measure weights and measures that describe changes, and so uh, that are that are reciprocal and which are not. So it all words are measurements. And which is something I take to the extreme, right? So, yeah. so, uh, so when he's saying that, of course, he's saying that uh, you must, uh, you must show that a word meant what it mean means. What you must show what the word meant at the time, not interpret it as it means today. And the reason for that is they're like you're not bypassing the goddamn legislature, and because when you bypass the legislature, you're bypassing the people. So you're not bypassing the people. You're not bypassing the legislature, and therefore you're not using the law and this this sophistry to uh, to make the court the vehicle for bypassing the people in the legislature. It's not happening with the Constitution, the people, people yeah. of the Constitution, the legislature. So, and he's absolutely correct, which is you can't conduct lawfare, 
right? I mean, that's what Scalia was really trying to do. He's, and that's why the court today is reversing things like abortion, whether we like that or not. The court's doing the right thing, which is handing it back to the states because that's a state issue. It's not a federal issue. And the same thing for um, the civil rights crap, right? That's a state issue, not a federal issue. So the, most of the stuff needs to go back. It's the same thing for marriage. Marriage is not a federal issue. It's a state issue. And so uh, they're trying to restore this because, of course, this the result is we don't is the tyranny of the race to the bottom instead of the uh, competition between states for a race to the top. And so, you know, I just see myself helping that sort of thing come to its fruition. But in any event, etymology, which I fucking love, right? Because you see me post these things. The etymology of truth is oak, right? Um, I have my Oxford English unabridged dictionary, dictionary. Volume set exactly. that my father gave me that has onion skin paper and four pages on every page. Oh my God, that's that's it is, and so so it's two thousand pages of 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 four pages per page. Here's I, the, I, I, yeah. This is the OED. This one. I'm showing it to Kurt, so I'm just holding it here until he shows up again. Yes, exactly. So this one, I, the 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 lawfare thing. Uh oh, I showed you the wrong book. The, I bought a book. I bought this dictionary that was Noah Webster's dictionary about 1812. I bought it because Noah Webster wrote the dictionary because they're going to try to change the words. <laughs> and I said, I'm buying this book because I. I I need that because that's important. Yeah, I think that that ought to play into one of there's see we forget all this stuff because there's this whole fuzzy bullshit right they're trying to put it put over on us for quite a while now. But uh you know, they knew exactly what people were doing, right? So they're so and and when I say English is a legal language. Um hmm. I think that people don't really get how important that is. English is a very um, high precision, low context language. Hmm. Even English is vulnerable um, if it's not understood that uh, terms mean term all language is measurement, and all measurements are the measurements that were taken at the time that the, the words were uttered or written. And even then, we have conflation, inflation, whatever, like mm -hmm. my favorite one, which I repeat all the time because I like that it sticks in people is faith, um, belief, faith is religious, belief is philosophical, um, uh, uh, trust is normative and uh, uh, confidence is personal, right? And so th this means I have the knowledge to do so. Um, so oh, confidence, what's the difference in confidence and certainty? Uh, probably an illusion. So I'll just stick with confidence, but I try to give those tr truth because people, we, you, we, you have faith in this, you have belief in this, uh, you trust this, um, or you, um, have confidence in this. Those have di very different meanings. Uh, we use them as if they're, they have the same terms, but they don't. Faith means I take it as for granted. Belief means I can justify it. Mm -hmm. uh, trust means I have some evidence of it uh, from externals, others, and confidence is I have evidence of myself. Now, those are four different categories of things that mean four different things. But you, when you're talking to ordinary people, they use whatever one they're familiar with. Right. So you can tell when somebody uses, well, that's just a statement of faith and well, it's because you live in a religious frame. That statement of belief, you live in a philosophical frame. The statement of trust, you probably live in a, a legal frame. And if you live in confidence, you probably live in an op op operation, an operational frame. And so it's like, which one are you, you, you know, it's like people say you can, like, we know you, you listen to somebody for about a hundred words and you can tell, you can practically tell them what they're going to think about anything. 
right? It just it has to be somewhat randomly constructed, but people's minds are quite transparent by the words they use because they you have to pick them. And in English, in English in particular, we have a lot of words for things. So well, we have at least four languages in there, right? We had a old German. <laughs> We've been stealing French, from all over the place. Roman and you know, Latin, Roman Latin and Greek. We have at least those four languages to draw from. And each of those things is a class. So you can tell by the words that people use what class they're from and how educated they are, which is how you, Amer how English speakers, and not so much in England to say, but how, certainly in America, it's how we know what your class you're from is what words you use. Mm. What was I telling you? I say, well, I would you would say Caribbean and I would say Caribbean, right? And there, there's, there's, you would say aunt and I would say aunt, right? Not you, like the other person, right? These are these are markers, right? And there's a whole bunch of them, really. Uh, there are markers, and those markers are like received pronunciation in of London versus mm -hmm. the um, the you know let's say the 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 who can I insult here? Uh, so, <laughs> so, you know, versus Birmingham, right? For example, like anybody can pick on Birmingham because it's one of the world's shit old cities now. So we can we can pick on it. But anyway, so if you said we're Birmingham accent, it's the same thing in English. So anyway, uh, now now you've gone silent. I know I've prattled on about the subject. Too. <laughs> it's just like what's interesting is it's little tags, little um. It's just a tag on the on the pronunciation that's a giveaway. It's interesting. I have a bunch of things my grandfather used to criticize me for. Because if you grow up in Connecticut, there are certain way certain word combinations mm. that, that you use that are lazy. Um, because well, there are in every part of the country, but in Connecticut, every time I would do I um, mean just that was not okay by Cotton Mather. It was like I was violating some sin that had been handed down from <laughs> God in Scripture. It's a transgression. Oh Lord! The one I remember from upstate New York was G Jet. J -E oh my! Did you eat yet, G Jet? Yeah. Um. Anyway, so what are we doing here, Brad? We uh. I think we're good. We can wrap this one up. Okay. This was a good discourse on um, language and the the science and the value of the science in um, demonstrate or in in appreciating the narrative as presented by a variety of people from their own perspective. Right. This fits you. You brought it up. The whole go go down down to the detail of the unambiguous language and then reapply it back up you right know. go back to the ambiguous or the seemingly ambiguous or potent or inflation i i call it from deflationary to inflationary so we reflect from the de most deflated point back to the inflated points and now we can we can apprehend we can understand and and discuss them in situ like I, uh, it's like who was I? Who was talking the other day? Somebody's prep or some kid online, some guy online, said, uh, "Apologize for the for the Christian whatever," but and then went through it. At that point, I know I'm talking to an adult, right? He's using his frame, not apologize, but or uh, I, this is a Christian position, but blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, okay, now I understand. He knows it's a grammar. I know it's a grammar, right? And he, we he, we have permission to talk to each other across the grammars. Which I thought was, which I just love that, right? But if you're making me speak in your language, that's the same thing as when the left is saying we can't, we have to use their terms. Hmm. And so I don't like that. I mean, I realize there are mythical, theological, philosophical, rational, empirical, scientific, and computational grammars, and I and then I I realize that you know the the more you go from that from one of that spectrum to the other the harder it is, but also the fewer people you can communicate with. If you want to make reach a lot of people, speak in the speak in the uh, mythical, right? Or the theological, and you'll which are our ancient parables, which is our oldest form, then you're going to reach a lot of people. 
try to speak like I do, which is down in the computational, I mean, you're going to reach people that have this whole freaking hierarchy of knowledge. So, anyway, so we did pretty good today, I think. We kind of created a good arc. Yes. All right. I'm, I'm, you're going to close now? You're going to do your thing? Oh, I almost forgot, Kurt. It's time for the people to hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. And do please leave us some comments. All right, brother. I love it. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, sir.